Let us pray. Fathers, we look to you this morning. We know that your mercies are new every day. Great is your faithfulness to us. As we seek you this morning, we just pray that, Lord, you'll be magnified and worshiped in the house of the living God. I pray today that we will lift our hearts up before the throne of heaven today to receive, Lord, your inspiration, your direction, your information, and, Lord, to receive today your instruction of how we are to live for the righteousness of Christ. I pray today that, Lord, there are folks here today that are probably carrying burdens and shouldering troubles in their lives. There may even be folks here today that even the seemingly some depression has slipped into their life and they're feeling down and discouraged. But, Father, I know today that you're the God who has your arms around us and you lift us up through the storms and the trials that we face. You are that ever-present help in time of trouble. I pray today that you will be exalted in the house of the living God. May our worship be pleasing in your sight. May your name be glorified. May you today have your will in your way. We just put our attention upon you. We seek Jesus this morning. We seek Jesus this morning. We desire you. We hunger for you. Oh, Lord, move in our midst today. We cannot do anything apart from you. I pray today that our worship will magnify your name. We lift our hearts before a righteous and holy God, and we've come into the house of worship today, expectant of the power of God to be poured out upon hearts and lives. Attend to every need of every heart and every life and be honored in your house by your people today. And we'll give you the praise and entrust this day to your care and your keeping. And thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty
Decisions I can't make on my own, and there are trials I can't face all alone. But you said you walk with me down life's trouble roads, and you said, Come unto me. And I'll bear your heavy load. I need you more today than I did yesterday. Mountains are higher, rivers are wider. I need you more today than I did I wake up in the morning and I fear to face the day. Oh, let me feel your gentle hand leading the way. Yesterday has come and gone with those trials far behind. Oh, but I'm ever learning, Lord. His son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, and empty to prove my Savior lives Hang it. because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know yes I know the future and life is worth the living just because he lives choir's coming down greet folks this morning and let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the living god and good day to you friends i hope that you're having a great day or evening whenever you're watching this program well, truly, the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever, and His grace is more than sufficient. We are blessed beyond measure. Well, old Mike Holcomb, the great gospel singer, sung many years with the Inspiration Quartet, made a statement. He said, we're blessed better than we ought to be. Well, I tell you what, we are, but I'm glad today we are blessed. And I trust today God's rich blessings today are resting upon your life today. Welcome today to the house of the Lord, and may worship today encourage your heart. As we're singing today, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
I'm glad today that God's already made a chart and a compass for our life to guide us and to direct us and to get us to the destination He has for us. That one day, they'll come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They'll gather in that great city of God, and there we'll praise the Lord forevermore. Well, friends, until that day shall come, remember, you're going to go through times of challenge and trials and difficulties in your life. But we've got a big God that can handle everything that we face in life. For He is still on the throne and we can trust Him in everything and through everything today. We're continuing a message that I preached last Sunday on the mere fact that God has a victory for you. And let me tell you, in the life that we're living and the struggles and the challenges that we're having, all the issues that we're facing today, depression has become one of the leading emotional uh, problems amongst Americans and globally speaking. But we've got a God that's bigger than that depression that you're in. Stay tuned for the message today. If you're in a mess right now, God can bring you out of it. He today can turn it all around if you place your confidence and your faith and your trust in Him. Stay tuned for the message and let's have an awesome time in the house of the Lord together today. May the music bless your heart. May today the praise encourage your heart and may you today Give God the glory. What a great and mighty God we serve. Glad you're with us. Stay with us. And may God richly Hallelujah. bless you. Amen. To hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still. can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I Yes, I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll find life's fire. church come on because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives oh fear is God because I know yes I just because he lives sing a chorus again because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives oh my fear is gone because I know yes I The living just because he lives. Give the Lord praise in the house of the living God. Oh, 
God has a victory for you, and this is uh, the second part in this message that we preached last Sunday. From the book of Job, chapter 3, starting with verse number 23 down through verse number 26, the Word of God says, Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roaring are poured out like the waters. For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Does that sound like your life sometimes? Especially those last three words, yet trouble came. I mean, you haven't been doing anything offensive to God. You've tried to live at the foot of the cross. You've tried to be faithful to the Lord. You call upon Him. You serve Him. You love Him. But it just seemed like yet trouble came. You desired to be faithful to the Lord. And you sought God's counsel. And you called upon Him. And you read God's Word daily. But yet trouble came. Well, friend, welcome to life. That's a part of living, isn't it? Trouble comes to every person, but aren't you glad that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm glad today that we have a promise from the Lord. Depression is one of America's number one emotional problems. 
And it's just not in America, but it's global wide. And there are many things that are contributive to those things that we face in life that bring us to that position and that place of depression. How do you deal with how you feel? How do you deal with the issues that you're facing every day? When there's been difficulty and loss in your life or struggles in your life and the inability to seemingly make the ends meet and you've got trouble at home and you've got trouble at work and you've got trouble in your finances and you've got trouble in your life and man, everywhere you look and everywhere you turn, it just seems like every corner, yet trouble came. And so we face these issues today. Last Sunday, I shared with you basically four sources for depression because you know what? Every one of us are subject to depression. I don't care how positive you are. I don't care how many books you've read. I don't care how many CDs you've listened to. I don't care how many programs that you've watched. And I don't care, you, eat, you know, whatever you eat for breakfast to make you feel good or whatever you, you, you think you have going on in your life. Every one of us are subject to depression. Every one of us can face it. But preacher, I'm a Christian. Well, let me tell you, Christians get depressed too. So this is a part of our life. But there's a point here, and I'm not justifying our depression because we all face these places and times in our life. My encouragement and my admonition to you is, even in the depressions that you face, don't stay there. It's not God's... God understands when we're feeling... He knows our human frame. He knows our minds. He knows what we face. He knows our frailties. He knows even today sometimes the lack of our faith. And we say that we have faith in God and we're not going to worry, but you know what we do? We worry anyway, don't we? We say, well, I'm not going to let something get to me. And what do we do? We let something get to us. The thing about worry and the thing about depression and anxiety is the fact that we all face these issues in life. But the key is this. Don't let it control you. And I found the quickest way to keep these issues in life controlling us is let God control you. Let God take over in your life. Now, the four areas that we just basically threw out at you last week, and I'm going to throw at you again, because this is kind of a summary or synopsis today of why we face depression. Uh, These four things, when, when darkness seems to settle into your heart, these issues could come from one of four points or sources today. One is situational. Today, those difficult or unbearable life circumstances that we face in life. You're going to have situational things, situations that happen in your life that's going to lead you to a point, place, time, and an encounter with depression. Secondly, what we call systematic. And this is those ongoing physical illnesses and those pains that we encounter. You woke up one morning and you had a pain in a place that you didn't even know you had a place. And we all have those issues. And, you know, you go to the doctor and you think, man, I feel I'm healthy as a horse. And the doctor says, I'm sorry, but you've got cancer. I mean, you know, those things face us in life. These are systematic things that will bring on depression because we're subject to these things. We, we are living in a body that started dying the day that we were born. Preacher, any more encouragement, I'm going to crawl under the pew. I'm just giving you facts of life. There are some good things that's going to come out of this, so don't, don't, don't crawl under the pew yet. Thirdly, today is satanic. We find that Satan's attempt to get us to question the goodness of God is prevalent in every day of our living. He wants you to question today, well, why am I going through this? This is our first question that bounce out of our mouth when we're facing an issue. But I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to live, and I'm trying to be. It's, it's not just that. It's the fact that, that you are a target of Satan in any area of your life. And especially if you're serving the Lord, and you're faithful to God, and you're dependable, uh, dependable for the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you, you are the bullseye. Satan is, you're in warfare with him every day. I am anyway, and I'm sure you are too. The Word of God says he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, he he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. I mean, it's consistent and it's persistent today. He never lets up. He never gives up. So he didn't win today. He'll be back tomorrow. 
But you've got to remember today there's a God that is within you that is far greater than whatever you're facing in life. Our God's a great and awesome God, isn't it? I mean, today, whatever we're facing, you look at the three occasions where Jesus, he encountered Satan, and he'd been in the wilderness for 40 days fasting and praying, and he comes on the scene, and here comes Satan tempting him. Let me tell you what, he'll do the same thing to you and I. If he could do that to the Savior, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God incarnate, let me tell you what, he'll do the same thing to you and I today. He didn't win with the devil. Is he winning with you? If we today will give him a place in our life, he today will seek to destroy us and pull us down and to defeat us. But you've not, you should not give any area to the devil. But preacher, you don't know what I'm in. I may not know what you're in, but God knows what you're in, and God can bring you out of whatever you're going through. So we've seen three things, but there's a fourth thing today that we always face too, and that's called spiritual. Those things that we encounter in life, spiritual, the suffering in the context of a sovereign God. I mean, sometimes God permits things to happen in our life that are not pleasant. They may be for correctional or they may be for maturity. He may permit things to happen in our life to refine our faith. Well, preacher, I don't think God has any right to prove me. Oh, really? Uh, listen, God's got every right to prove you in any way that he wants to. Remember who he is and remember who we're not. He's God, we're not. He's on the throne, we're not. He's in control, we're not. But I found the more of my life I turn over to him, the more in control of my life he becomes. So you're going to face spir spiritual issues in your life that sometimes become depressing, defeating, even seemingly in your life. But God's able to bring you through those things that you're facing and give you the victory that you're desirous of. I, I want you to know something today, that God can set you free from depression. Amen. God is your liberator today. You can pop all the pills. You can read all the books. You can listen to all the CDs. And today you can take all the motivational courses that are out there. But I'm going to tell you there's nobody that can help you like God can help you. Amen. And so tomorrow can be a wonderful day. And you know what? It's all because of God's amazing grace. As a matter of fact, if your day is bad today, it can be a good day today. Amen. You can have a good day with God every day. But preacher, you don't know what I'm in. I don't know what you're in, but if you'll stop looking at what you're in and start looking at the God who's in it with you, you'll find that he'll bring you through those things that you're facing. And so therefore today, it's where we're putting our focus, our perspective, our attention, and it's where we're putting today our priorities. If your priority is on you, your flesh, and the world, I'm going to tell you, you're going to walk around depressed, defeated, and discouraged all the time. But if you will put your faith, your confidence, and your trust in the Lord, today you can say today is a great day. This is the day. David, look at his life. Here's the man after God's own heart. Here's the man that went through a lot of things. Here's the man that Saul pursued. Here's the one that even his son tried to kill in Ab Absalom. Here's the man that spent a lot of his time being pursued to be killed. Here's the man that in the book of Kings we find that he was facing a trial. He came home from a, an encounter with his men. His home had been burned. His family had been taken. And not only his, but his entire group of men, his soldiers, his warriors that were with him. And then all of a sudden, these great champions that was on David's side, these great champions that stood beside him and fought battles, these great champions that carried the sword and these great champions that swung the, the spear and, and those great champions. And all of a sudden, they're turning against the man of God. God, and now they're going to stone him to death. But even in the depths of, de of depression and defeat, do you think Joan, I mean, uh, David felt, really, this is great. No, he felt the pains that you and I would feel. But he did one thing and he did the right thing. The Word of God said he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I'm glad to tell you the same God that was there for David is the same God that's there for you and I. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, you look at the progression of David's life. He was not free from pain. He was not free from depression. You think he was encouraged when he was sitting in a cave and Saul was out to kill him? He was depressed. And you look at the line list. Elijah, Moses. I mean, they're great. Jeremiah. I mean, he'd gotten down in a pit and he was ready to give up. And the Word of God says a fire in his bones started to ignite. And he couldn't give up on the God whom he served. I'm telling you, even the greats contained in the pages of God's Word that are our heroes of the faith, that, that have the headlines of, of Hebrews chapter 11, are the same ones that went through depression like you and I go through. But they knew a God who was in the midst of whatever they were facing. Do you think Daniel was happy because of what he was facing and he was going to a lion's den? I know what he said, but I also know that he was human. Do you think that he, three Hebrews, even though they said the Lord, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us, do you think they had any 
place of difficulty going on in their life? Do you think there were some places in their life that maybe they said, I'm not really sure what's going on here. And you know, it would have been easy to sink into depression, but what did they do? They rose up in the occasion and they trusted the God whom they had placed their confidence and their faith in. That same God's there for you and I today. Listen. You, you've got to get yourself in a position today. And, and, and some of you today are majoring on your problems instead of today majoring on the God who's in the problem with you. All you want to do is, 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 is wade through the sewers of your yesterdays and today remember the things that happened back whenever. Do you realize everything that's in the past is still there? Do you realize everything that you went through and every sin that you've committed and everything that you put before the throne of God and God's get forgiven you of? Do you realize those things are G-O-N-E, baby? Gone. Stop living today in the sewer of the past and start living in the day because this is a good day that God has given us. Amen. I'm telling you today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forget what's in the past. Put it behind you today. Think on the things that are good. Think on the things that are wholesome. Think on the things today that are honest and true. That's what the Word of God says. And when you possess those things in your thoughts, you will have a hope that is steadfast and sure and is unmovable and is solid in the fact of what God has said in His Word. Amen. See, today you've got to build your life on the Lord. You won't, you won't be thinking about your problems. You'll be rejoicing in the solutions that God is providing, that Jesus Christ has given you on the authority of his precious, inert, infallible word called the word of God. The Bible says, hope thou in God, Psalm 42 and verse 5. Man, if we could just get that in our spirit as born again, washed in the blood, children of God. If we could learn to really hope thou in God. If we could really anchor our soul in the hope that we have in him today. You know what? There's not a mountain that God would not get us over. There's not a problem that's not solvable. There's not a situation that God cannot answer. If we would learn to hope thou in God. Amen. Amen. Folks, the word of God tells us in Joshua 1 and 9. He says, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Hmm. You rejoice by choice. You rejoice by choice. It's something that you do. It's not something that you've got to sit down and think about. It's something that becomes a part of your life every day. You rejoice in the Lord. We're living in a stressful generation. We're living in times of difficulty. We're living in times where people are losing their head because they're Christians. We're living in a time when even Bible-believing Christians today are being attacked by the media of America for defending social issues that affect our families. Well, let me tell you what. I'll still tell you today. God's Word is still true, and God's Word is still faithful, and God's still a God of high morals and living right. You can choose the gutter of the world, and it's exactly what you're going to get. Or you can choose the path that God has laid out before us. Amen. We're living in a day of moral insanity today. When there's a holocaust that is being performed, you mean six million Jews died at the hands of Hitler. How many innocent children are being slaughtered in the abortion clinics every day? Whether you realize it or not, that's a holocaust. 1.6 million children died at the hands of Hitler. How many children have died at the hands of people that do not respect God and human life? Amen. Folks, I'm telling you, listen to Paul's words found in Romans 8. See if this today does not fit the culture that we're living in. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now listen to this. Wherefore God also gave up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman uh, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of that error which was met. And even as they did not 
like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. We're living in a reprobate culture. We're living in a reprobate generation. And we're living in a day where they are applauding and embracing the wrong rather than standing for the right. Where in the world is the voice of the church? Where in the world is the voice of the born-again, blood-washed child of God that still believes there is a God that respects and even gives life? And folks, if he made you a man, then you are a man. And if you're a woman, he made you a woman. And as I told you last Sunday, you can call it transgender, you can call it transvestite, you can call it anything you want to, but you cannot change gender. That's a medical fact. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, my heroes are not on the box of Wheaties. My hero is contained in the pages of this blessed black back book called the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Where's the voice of the church today? I listened to some preaching this morning on television as I was getting ready. And you know what? I, just, I was bored stiff. I'll just be real frank with you. It's all mechanical. It's all flesh generated. It's all twisting and turning and making people feel good in the flesh. That's not going to change you. That's not going to change our generation. It's not going to change our society. It's not going to change our world. We've got to get back to the biblical principles of God's Word. We've got to get back to godly and holy living. We've got to get back to Jesus first. It's a sad day when church is a counseling service because of convenience. Doing away with Sunday night services because people want to spend time with their family. You're supposed to spend time with your family in church. And if you're doing that, listen, if you're a church, and I told, and I put it on that Facebook, I'm on that internet site, a web page. If your church has canceled services, listen what? We haven't. So come on over here on Sunday nights. We got it going on, okay? Amen. Now, I probably made most of the preachers in this area mad, but I really don't care. Because you know what? I hope they get mad and start preaching the gospel. And I hope I start proclaiming the truth of God's word and salvation of the Lord. Don't go out and boast today about your church is this and your church is that. And your church no more has a mind for Christ than a, my dog does. Get back to this word and preach the word. Preach salvation by grace. Preach the blood of the cross. Preach deliverance by Jesus Christ. Preach that Jesus is coming again. Get ready. He's coming. And you better get ready soon because it's coming a lot sooner than you think. Amen. Amen. We better prepare to meet our God. God is not a convenience. God is a commitment. God is your burden bearer at all times. He, he is that friend that will stick closer than a brother. And when you call him Jehovah Shammah, he's the God who is always there. He is the God today who has never failed you. He is the God today that cannot fail today, cannot and will not fail you today. And from the book of Job, you can see that Job is, is not pleased with his life. And so he's reached even a place of depression and a place of difficulty. Could that be where you are today? Maybe you're not sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And maybe you haven't lost ten children. And maybe you haven't lost everything. And maybe today your integrity has not gone out the window. And maybe today you're not poor as Job's old turkey. But the fact of the matter is you're sitting in some similar circumstances that Job was sitting in in his day. If you're not careful, you can find yourself completely consumed with discouragement and depression. And faithfulness to God does not guarantee today believers freedom today from the trouble, the pain, and the sufferings of life that we go through. Look what Job said in the Word of God. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the soles of his feet unto his crown. That's the top of his head. And he took him to a, and he took him a pot sheared. That's a piece of pottery that had been broken. And he scraped himself with all. You know what he was scraping off? He was scraping off those ulcerated, intensified, painful boils that was covering his body, and he sat down amongst the ashes. Those last few words tells me Job was depressed. 
He was in a place. Let me give you seven reasons why believers suffer today. The consequences of the fall of Eden is the first one. Why we face today depression. Believers suffer an ongoing consequence from the fall that happened in the Garden of Eden. When sin entered the world, pain, sorrow, and, and conflict, and death invaded the lives of the human being. And that's a part of what we face today. What do we do? We must not cast ourselves today to the world, but we must today lay ourselves today before the very grace of God that He has provided, the strength and the comfort that He can provide. Who stays depressed? I'll tell you who stays depressed. Those, stay, those who stay depressed are those who choose to stay depressed. I didn't say today you won't face depression. You shall, you will, and you can. But today you make the choice whether you stay there. Amen. You may not be able to escape it, but you know what? You can, con you can make the choice whether it controls you today or not. The Word of God has over 3,000 promises contained in the book. And you can sum those up in one sentence today. Live your life in confidence. Hope thou in God. Amen. That's where we have to live today. Listen to what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such that is common to man. But God is faithful. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Amen. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Joshua said, Joshua said, be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Hallelujah. Secondly today, some believers suffer for the same reason that unbelievers do as a consequence of their actions. Whatever and whatever a man will sow, that will a man also reap. You sow to the wind, you're going to reap a whirlwind, the Bible says. We must always act in wisdom in accordance with the pages of God's Word. We can avoid today whatever today that is going on in the world by keeping our attention and our focus on the Lord. You do not have to sin because everyone else is doing it. You don't have to choose the unrighteous path. You've been placed in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Amen. We've got to avoid whatever will remove us today from the presence of God. What's pulling you away from God today? What's keeping you from the Word? What's keeping you from praying? What's keeping you from trusting? What's keeping you from serving? Well, preacher, you know, I got this and I got that and over here and I got that and I am just so busy. I got so much going on. And let's not leave out. I need my pleasure. I got to have my pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I got to have it. Oh, really? You mean you'd rather have pleasure over God? Don't misunderstand me. Nothing wrong with taking a vacation. Nothing wrong with getting some time away with your family. I have no problem with that. But when you are putting everything above God, I have, but even far greater, God has a problem with that. When convenience becomes your God, when the world becomes your God, when everything around you becomes your God, something's wrong. And you've got to get your heart right with the Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, folks, we've got to avoid whatever is removed. What's keeping you from coming to church on Sunday night? The building's quiet. What's keeping you from Wednesday night services? What's keeping you from serving God? What's keeping you from being faithful? I wish you'd get off of that. Well, I'm going to grant you your wish. Next point. <laughs> Believers, that's probably the only time you'll get it granted too. Believers also suffer in their inner selves because they live in a sinful and a corruptive world. You are in the world, but you don't have to be like the world. And when you pray to God, he will demonstrate his victory today over the power of sin that is in your life today. The reason some of you can't get the victory is because you won't let go of the world and you will not let go of sin. Amen. Next point. Believers suffer at the hands of the devil. The story of Job centers on an upright, God-fearing man that even God said was perfect in all of his ways. But God permitted him to be tormented by Satan with unspeakable suffering. 
difficulty. No man apart from Jesus Christ has ever suffered the loss and the intensity of pain that Job suffered. We suffer too, don't we? We face depression too, don't we? God's given us today a spiritual armor today that does not fail. That's why Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God. We've got to wear that armor. You put on this armor of God because it's the means where you dress for success. This is the way that you overcome the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. You've got to pray, and you've got to resolve today in perseverance today, and you've got to be faithful in the strength that God has placed within you today. Amen. Next point. Believers suffer because we have the mind of Christ. You know, the more that you desire to be like Jesus, the more you're going to be under attack. To be a Christian means to be in Christ and to be one with Him. And so as a result, we share in His suffering. And today, just because you're a Christian does not mean you're exempt from suffering today. This is not the place of defeat. It's the place, for actually, of joy unspeakable. And the Word of God says, full of glory. Paul tells us in Romans 15, 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Word of God is a joyful book for a joyous people. Amen. See, you're telling me on yourself now. The Word of God is a joyful book for joyous people. Amen. And the more that you're in the book of joy, the more joyful you'll be. You know why we walk around with our chin hung down to our kneecaps and we're defeated and depressed and down and out and all this other stuff? Because you just revealed in your life you're not in conversation with God in prayer and you're not in the Word of God. So you just put on the headline on the billboard of your life, God's not first in my life. Folks, put Him first. This joyous book will bring joy unspeakable and full of glory to your life. But preacher, I don't have time. And I think we just used that little excuse a few moments ago. Listen, you better make time for God. Considering the time that he made for you and I on the cross. Amen. Jesus gave us three cheers in the Bible. And I love them. One, he says, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Aren't you glad he's a forgiving God? If you've got sin in your life today, and if you've rejected him as your personal Savior, I'm glad to tell you today, he'll forgive you, he'll save you. And then after you're, sin, after you're saved, yeah, you're still living in the same flesh, and you still will sin in life. But I'm glad today the Word of God tells us that God will forgive us of our sins. And I'm glad our sins are forgiven. Man, that's shouting ground. Be of good cheer. Aren't you glad what was against you is not against you anymore? Aren't you glad every sin that you committed in your life in, in your prior life, in your past, when you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin, aren't you glad he took and he removed? He didn't erase it. He blotted it out. Not even a trace of it is remembered. Second today, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Well, Jesus said you're more than a conqueror through him that loved you. And so therefore today, you're not defeated. You're an overcomer because one day you were smart enough to come over. And third, be of good cheer. He says, be not afraid. In other words, don't have a fearful heart. Folks, the next point is God himself may use suffering in our lives for spiritual growth or spiritual change. God will use suffering as a catalyst today to, for repentance. And not only that, but he also does it for renewal of our faith, that we renew our faith in him today. Make confession, making confession should be a daily practice in your life. Well, you need to confess your sins daily. Amen. We learn... God's grace through the trials that we encounter. And then we find this. God can use the suffering of the, of the righteous to further the cause of the kingdom of, and his plan of redemption. Jesus suffered, bled, died. He today is God's plan of redemption that we could be realizing that in our lives and receiving him. God will give you victory in depression. Aren't you glad of that? God will give you victory. How does he do it? Listen, you've got to learn to attack your problems with the power of the gospel. Amen. Many of our problems are rooted in our sins, aren't they? Hallelujah for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The question is this, have you confessed? 
Have you got things right with you and God? The power of the gospel says, Nay, in all these things, as I shared with you a moment ago from Romans 8, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Also, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. John said, Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. And also today you can be strong in his might. And you can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might today. If you're depressed, stop walking away today from the solution that is found in God's word and start cleaving to the things of God that is your help and that is your shield and is your hope. Amen. Meditate, secondly, on God's word. King David said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of, the wa rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he do, he, he shall prosper. Amen. Who controls your mind? The Holy Spirit or Hollywood? If we could get obsessed with God's word as much as we are about we can't miss our programs on television. We would really be turned on to Jesus, wouldn't we? Amen. What you put in your mind is what you're going to be. Amen. To have the happiness of Jesus, you've got to have the holiness of God. Amen. You've got to have God's presence in your life. Fill your life with God's Word. Actually, today, if you want an antidote for depression... Here it is. And it's not found in a pill bottle. It's found in the gospel. Amen. Believers, uh, believe God cares for you deeply, regardless of your circumstances. The pains of life should never lead you to deny God's love. Also, turn to God in earnest prayer and seek His face. Psalm 34 and 10 says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise God. And then remember God is involved in your problems. Only God can bring you victory. But I'm going to tell you something and you hear what I say. He can only bring you victory through a surrendered life. Amen. Being depressed isn't wrong. Staying depressed is. You can get up when you're down. And God will give you the strength. Hear me. God has a full plan for your recovery. And let me tell you this. I'm going to tell you where it starts. I'm standing before it right here. It starts right here. This is where your victory is going to start, at an altar. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I invite you to come and receive him as your Savior today. If you're going through some times and troubles and things in your life that's pulling you down, you can bring those things to him today, for he's here. If you need healing, he can give it. If you need encouragement, he'll grant it. If you need today direction, he'll supply it. Whatever the need it starts right here. And now the choice is yours. If you want the victory, this is where it starts. You've got to make the decision to come get it. Father, we just ask now that you're blessed today. A season of invitation that your name will be exalted and glorified and praised. I pray, Lord, as we stand to our feet today and as this song through the fire is played, folks may be going through some fires in their lives right now. But here's a God at an altar today that will lift their every burden and encourage their heart. I pray you'll save the lost. Touch those today that have drifted from your fold today and bring them back into the place of obedience. And Lord, bring those to the altar today that Lord, Lord just want to come and praise you and seek solutions for their life. Have your way, Lord. Will you come right now? Come on. Here's enough of God right here in this room right now to meet your every need. Don't turn him away. Bring it to him. Let him work as only he can work.